Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Mid-South Wrestling Review program. The Mid-South Wrestling Review would be uh, March the, t or November the 10th, I'm sorry, uh, 1984, as we kind of go through the process of closing out 1984. As mentioned, we have, from almost every show, with notable missing, maybe 10, something like that, Missing from the network from December 81 right now up through the end of October 84. We will have all that's available in 84 and 85 available within the next couple of weeks. And then we're going to go back, hopefully find some stuff from the 70s and the UWF days too in other sources. But uh, the Rock and Roll Express demands a scaffold match. Scaffold match obviously hanging off the top. Of the scaffold, they are several feet, 25 feet, they said, I think, at one point in the air, and that is there. Uh, Dale Veasley and Jack Victory versus the Rock and Roll Express in a studio match. Not exactly where you'd want to be if you know you've got a scaffold match coming. I'm not sure who would really want to do those, especially the tag team champions of one of the larger territories in the country. But um, the Midnights and the Rock and Roll are headed to scaffolds. Not exactly the smartest of decisions. Irish whip and both of the heels go together. Jack Victory and his partner both on the receiving end of uh, the, I guess you'd say, drop kicks under the chin. And then a double drop kick from the Rock and Rolls. Rock and Roll go for a quick pin and Jack Victory takes the loss for his team. Uh, then we go to Scandor Akbar making an announcement. Jim Cornette is in the ring, and we now have Sheik Hercules Hernandez, as there is an acquisition. Cornette has sold his interest in Hercules to Akbar. Akbar continues to get more, uh, I guess you'd say, power and authority. Uh, and Butch Reed uh, is there, and uh, so is Steve Williams. Basically, Reed says he does not wish to align with Skandor Akbar, he basically says that he doesn't trust the dirty money of Akbar and ultimately puts himself in the babyface alignment indirectly. Uh, Hacksaw Duggan and Butch Reed come back together after several, uh, I guess you'd say, weeks, months, years apart, whatever have you. In an interview segment, they basically agree that they have a common enemy in Akbar and everything that is there as far as Akbar is concerned. They cannot afford to be each other's enemies, so they're choosing to be friends. Uh, the Alamo brothers, uh, the Alamo Busters, uh, Chavo and Hecto, Hector Guerrero, uh, are here. They manage to wrestle Shawn Michaels and Mike Jackson. Uh, and that's why I get confused. There is a, a, a Mike. And I, from time to time, Mike Jackson dresses a little differently. Shawn Michaels, yes, is that Shawn Michaels. Obviously, the Alamo brothers or the Guerrero brothers are here. Um, tagging off, working together quite fluidly are the Guerreros. Jackson gets his arm wrung for quite a bit by a Guerrero. Hard for me, I'm going to be honest, to tell them apart when they're close together. Uh, just because I, they don't get that many close-ups on the Guerreros. I believe Hector does the majority of things float over by Jackson into a half crab, into an elbow drop, and the Guerreros are regular with tags. Uh, meanwhile, though, Jackson and Michaels cut things off. Michaels comes in and gets stomped on pretty quickly. Of course, this is Shawn Michaels 1984, probably the earliest footage of him anywhere, and a couple of shots under the chin. Michaels goes into the ropes and takes a bump right in on off of a couple of elbows and a big body slam there double underhook uh suplex by i believe mondo Guer or maybe hector uh guerrero and um guerrero's work michael's over in their corner uh ultimately then we see a tag back to Mike uh, Jackson. Jackson catches a couple of drop kicks on the on the Guerreros, and uh, the Guerreros kind of getting some double team, kind of getting things over in their corner of the ring on a consistent basis. Uh, one of them tags in with a uh, with a uh, brain buster, and another tag, I believe, to Mondo. Mondo comes in with kind of a diving roll through 
and uh, gets the pin on Al Jackson. Odd that Michaels, more of the rookie, not taking the pinfall there. Ted DiBiase versus Lee Ramsey. Lee Ramsey relatively a new uh, comer and a new enhancement talent. Not going to be around terribly a long time, I wouldn't imagine. Anyway, Ted DiBiase, a good enough opponent for just about anybody in these days. Short knee by DiBiase. He breaks his opponent down pretty simply. He, uh, he continues to take shot after shot at the man. Uh, and and uh, a, couple of cho- a couple of chops. DiBiase also with a shot to the top of the head. And demanding a little bit more, um, I guess, respect, for lack of a better term. And that is there. Um, ultimately, the Irish whip by DiBiase. DiBiase with the back elbow. And managing to get the figure four, hook the figure four, and a good way we go. DiBiase manages to get the submission via the figure four. Midnight Express against Master G and Brickhouse Brown. And Cornette still, after all these months wearing the mask, headed into the scaffold matchup coming, I believe, the end of November, beginning of December, something like that. Um... And the Midnight Express certainly ready to, uh, ready to go here. Uh, they are not your tag team champions at the moment, although they may return to being soon enough. Cornet uh, on the floor with uh, Dennis, and the Midnight Express kind of regrouping on the floor. They're not particularly happy with what's going on in the ring. They bail out to see about Cornet and see. What he has to say, certainly Master G has cooled off in push, but still is considered a pretty big star in the area. Uh, Bobby Eaton with a couple of shots right under the chin, and he's right after his opponent. No big deal for him. Um, Some shots and a body slam by uh, Master G. G manages to... Uh, get a body slam and again does that pretty well into the knee and the Irish whip a hard shot by Bobby Eaton and again we see tag off choke out and a really basic thing there as Bobby Eaton taking control manages the body slam and again uh, tries to make sure that uh, um D, uh, yeah, uh, Master G comes out, doesn't come out the back door, but fails anyway. Uh, D manages to get, or G manages to get the suplex off, and uh, Bobby on the top rope doesn't air, doesn't end very well. Uh, actually hits the first big elbow drop, almost like an Alabama jam with the amount of height he got, and a win for the Midnight Express. Ernie Ladd and Buddy Landell. Refused to compete due to what they consider to be unnecessarily hazardous working conditions. And they are unhappy with the conditions. They are... uh, Lad also doesn't like who he's going to wrestle. And he basically says as a champion he should have better pick. Um, Anyway, finally, um, Dr. Death, Steve Williams calls out Hacksaw Duggan. Basically says Duggan's been a coward and hasn't faced him since the attack several weeks ago. And we close the program on that note. We'll be back with more right after this.